All right. Uh, again, uh, coming off a weekend this weekend, which we needed to play better than we had before. Thought we did uh, achieve what we needed to do. I uh, got better last week in a lot of areas. Got to continue to get better in all three phases again this week. We need to focus on today, not past today. Do the things in all three phases that get us in preparation to, to be the best we can be on the weekend and uh, get ready to go. But I thought in uh, that game Saturday, I thought our special teams did a really nice job of controlling field position. I think we averaged 34 yards of kickoff return, 14 yards of punt return. Uh, did one uh, did a nice job covering kicks. We kicked well. We kept them inside the 20 almost every time we kicked off. Uh, punt cover one time they held us up and got one down the sideline which we've got to get corrected because uh, they got a very dynamic punt returner this week but we were kicking the ball very well had one nice pooch punt down to the 10 yard line he had executed that very well we caught it downed it uh, did that uh, kicked field goals made our field goals did the things we had to do in that area uh, offensively again ran the football well was very efficient on third down through the through the football very effectively even though we elected not to after because the first quarter we were six for six for 104 yards and a touchdown and playing very well but got control of the game and running the football and had some nice runs but then it still picked up third down conversions and decisions for the most part through the ball very effectively when we had to and converting and adding to the plays uh, and again continued to run it red zone was excellent uh, then the last, I think, I don't know, six or some, six, seven minutes to go in the game at the end, we ran the clock out with our four-minute offense, never gave it back, got first downs, executed in that way, managed the clock very well from a quarterback standpoint where we snapped the ball and did things of that nature. Uh, had one penalty on offense, which was very critical, again, not putting yourself behind the eight ball. Uh, had, that was a late hit, which was an aggressive penalty, but at the same time, got to be a little smarter there. I uh, only had four penalties on the game, so played much more discipline in the way we played, getting better in that area. Defensively, uh, start off, the first, you know, the first drive, two drives were not very good, but the first the first play, we're there. We just don't make the play. We're in the right position. We're in the right call. We're in the right deal. Just don't make the play. Come back later, he makes a play on the same type play later on. Uh, that's ball. And then the second drive, they, they had a nice drive. We got we had a few missed assignments, got it ironed out, then went nine straight times with the ball out. Did a great job. Had six three and outs, which is incredibly tough. Uh, had two critical turnovers, got a pick, and then got a pick six after we actually turned it over coming out the second half, which I was not happy about, and then got it right back for us, and then went on a 94-yard drive after that. So defensively did a great job there. Well, we didn't finish. Got a little bit undisciplined in our gap control. Again, those last two or three drives, and give them momentum. It was on a third down play. We make a third down play. We're off. We'll get another three and out. They hit the big run, get a little momentum, and then got some confidence, and then hit a really nice pass play down the side. Again, in the right call. We got the guy covered as far as we're half a step off. They make a perfect throw. Got it covered a half a step better. And uh, they started that drive. And then we got to finish better. But uh, getting better, have a long way to go in all three phases, and we'll keep working. Questions? I was not frustrated. Okay. I was not frustrated. Everybody keeps saying I'm fr I was not frustrated at all. I just gave you factual answers. I mean, you wanted to know, you asked a question, what was the difference? We did our job. What was the difference when they started scoring again? We didn't do our job. I mean, we were there, and, and that's that's not frustration. That's fact. I wasn't frustrated. I mean, I want to make every play on offense and defense. We weren't perfect in any phase, but we're getting better, and we're doing good things. And we got to get some of those young guys have to continue to grow and develop and make plays. They're making, they're just making them a step slow at times. And then we got to be more disciplined in some gap control consistently. Because we did it for, when you do it for nine straight drives and do that right there, they couldn't move it an inch. It shows you how we can play, just like we did at Ole Miss. We just got to continue to do that. Got to be more physical up front, I think. And I think on both sides, a defensive line and offensive line continue to be physical up front is going to be really key. And we got to do that up front on the defensive side even more so, too. Keep playing a little bit high, got to get our hands in better places and have gap control with them also, and not just always on the secondary linebackers. They got to get off and make some plays and also push that pocket and push that line of scrimmage. Jimbo, they were talking about this on TV and generalizing like we tend to do. You tend to, yeah, I know. Name me, name me a team that doesn't have trouble with dual-threat quarterbacks. That's what I want to know. Name me a team that doesn't have trouble with dual-threat quarterbacks. I mean, that, that's part of it. I mean, it, it's, it's the way of the world and the way people do things. And, I mean, the best team in the country, Alabama has trouble with them. Ohio State, I mean, everybody has trouble with them. I mean, that's, that's it. And we, but we have to, here's the problem. It doesn't matter. I don't care what everybody else does. We have to get better at what we're doing because we're going to face them. What's, what's the most effective way or what do you preach to your kids when you Same thing I just said. Do your job. I control gap control and be physical to line of scrimmage. Dent to, when you dent the lines of scrimmage and you push them back and you make those things bubble and you let people run to them and you stay gap control and you stay inside out and you trigger 
A lot of times we would trigger, but we'd be a step slow or two steps slow. And all of a sudden that gives the back room to make you miss. It's like Dalvin on the first play. They have a safety run the alley. We get everybody blocked. He's a step slow. Guess what happens? It's no different when Dalvin gets the ball. When you trigger and fit on great players, you've got you to eliminate the space, what we call it. So there's no air. And you got to trigger quicker, seal it up so there's no, it's like water. There's no sieves or creases for it to go in. And you got to do it quicker and more and physical to do it. And you have to do it every daggone time against good players. No, I mean, there was an urgency to do it and do it right and a focus. And I, and I say this all the time and I joke. But you, and everybody, everybody brushes it off. Kids do not focus at the level they used to focus at because our world is a multitasking world, just like y'all right now. Some of you are tweeting it out. You're writing it. You're listening. You're doing four things at once. But are you really concentrating on any of them if you had if, if you focused on one thing? And our world does. Think about Sports Center. When you watch Sports Center, you watch Sports Center, then you're reading the ticker at the bottom and you're reading the four, five things on the left sideline about what's to come up. Am I right or wrong? So your mind is really in where? Five different places. And, and you guys, and it's funny, but it's the truth. You have to teach kids to focus and the urgency of learning to lock in and not get bored because kids tend to do that. And I know that sounds crazy, but that's a, fa it's a factual thing about our society today. And you see scores and things all over the country like this. And it's part of being mature and understanding what your job is. And it's not an excuse. We have to do that. And that's what we did for those nine series. We did that. Then we had just got a little bit of lag. And it happened on a third down for two straight downs. We were third and five. And we give up five more yards on two downs. And did not fit a trap, did not pull and hit the puller in the backfield. And the other backer, when he saw the puller, did not step over one gap. If we do that, it's there. There's no first down. We're another three and out. And it created one little space. And he got a run. And they got momentum. And then they, then they go. And that's, but you cannot ever, ever have those lapses. Solidly. Had a solid game. Did a nice job a couple times. Had a couple tackles for loss. Got more plays, you know. Played a lot in there and, and did a solid job. General, what was it like to see Dallas have a great game that he hadn't had? And what do you think that's confidence Well, about my confidence. <laughs> and we can run that football like that. It's good. I mean, that's and I, and I joke about that, but it is. It, you know, and our offensive line's confidence and our team's confidence. And you go back and watch that film now. Our offensive line put hats on hats. Did not have penalties. Stepped. Communicated. We checked. Did the things we had to do. Uh, tight ends blocked their tails off. I mean, Maven um, Izzo one time took one through the end zone and blo but blocked well. Maven Sanders probably had his best game as a football player here at Florida State, blocking and doing the things he did. Our receivers, Travis Rudolph had five or six cuts downfield, and you saw him escorting those guys on those long runs or cutting guys down. Bobo blocked well. Our receivers did a nice job down. Our fullbacks. And it was good that we could play that physical part of the game because it only opens up the passing game and other things in which we do. And uh, it was just, you know, good relief that we're getting that, that balance again on off and throwing the ball and running the ball. Is it contagious to see one guy do well? No doubt. Anything. It's, mo it's called and that momentum. I say it all the time. Momentum. And all of a sudden you start getting confidence and all the things that you thought were, oh, ain't so bad no more. And I start playing fast. I quit thinking. I start reacting. And I play football. Now you got to go back and do it again this week. And that's what I'm trying to say. Do your job this week. And don't flip past to Monday. Practice for Monday, do what we got to do on Monday, get better on Monday. No, just the way formation went. We had a lot to the right, too. I mean, we had, we had some good ones to the right uh, both ways. It wasn't not a planned thing to go left or right. It was what, what the defense was giving us and our checks and what, we want, what looks we wanted to run into. And, and DeAndre did a really, if they don't, you know, well, quarterback didn't throw much. But you talk about managing the game, getting your checks, getting you, that's decision making too. Getting you to the right call, the right play. He's really growing in that aspect too. Is he doing as much of that now as they did earlier? No, he's getting better and better at it. Getting better and better at it. Well, I think more mature. That's another year. He's stronger. Uh, game slowed down and even setting back sometimes when you got taken out, you know, and just seeing and then analyzing and watching and he's just becoming a better football player. And then again, he and Ricky Leonard, we feel comfortable. We're developing two guys at that position that we feel really comfortable with. Jim, what do you like about him? He's not on my team. <laughs> <laughs> no, what is I'm joking. No, he is a di he's a dynamic. He's a guy. I like him, but he's going to be a pain in the tail. He can throw it. He can move. He can run. He makes good decisions. <clears throat> he's a competitor. He's big. He's strong. He's hard to get down in the pocket. 
arm strength underneath, run pass options, throw the ball. I mean, he does it all. I mean, he's a really, really good player. Really good player. I have great confidence. He's got great confidence, and, and I think that makes them grow, just like DeAndre did making us back. You know what I'm saying? All those, when you go in those situations, you're able to make those plays. And again, like I say sometimes, part of learning to play on the field is you once you finally have that success and you say, you know, I can do this. You know what I'm saying? And that's probably a big moment for him, too, in the, in the kind of game he had. Big time. You saw it on our end. I mean, a dual threat quarterback. Look, you forget, we dual threaded him back. I mean, and what happens? And it makes your lineman better because angles now getting, get, get better. So now you're blocking back because you're up a guy. See, when you're, that's what people don't understand. When you're up, when your quarterback does all that, it's a, it's a very dynamic thing. But it's a, you know, you risk of injuries and things like that. It happened. But it makes everybody on the field better because the angles increase. And they have to play both sides, and especially when you can throw the football. Changes everything. Is that something you kind of wanted to get to? After the I've always had it. We've always had this in the offense. And I've always done it off and on through the history of my career for the last 16 years. It was nothing new that we didn't put anything new in. It was something we've always had. You know, too much, a few times in that game, you have players getting on the teammates, holding them accountable. Have you seen more maturity? Yeah, career? they got to. I mean, and, 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 and again, hey, you know, you talk, we're look, talking to you, not at you. You know what I'm saying? When we're with you. We, you got to do that. And that's, that's with the good teams that I've ever been on, I never used to have to say anything. Those guys would grab each other by the face mask or by the throat and. Hey, this ain't going. You got to fix it. You need to get right. You need to do that. I mean, back on your good teams, you never, as a coach, very rarely ever had to say something like that. And and when I'm saying this can be a good team, and I think that's part of a sign that we're heading in the right direction. But guys are feeling, you got to feel comfortable in that role too. You know what I'm saying? And you're getting more guys starting to feel comfortable. Because again, like I said, there's not a lot of seniors on this team, even though guys have played. And you know, taking that role and say, well, man, I'm a sophomore, or I'm a junior. Can I really do that? Yes, you can. And they, and they're growing into that, and, that, and that's a good sign. I'm going to take a question from Matt Baker here. Matt? Hey, Jimbo, what are your impressions of uh, UNC's defense? Very good. Big, big physical guys up front. Heavy guys, thick, strong. Backers are athletic. Two corners are probably playing both in the legs. Safeties can tackle well, uh, play in space well. The nickel, and then they go, when they go nickel, move six inside and bring five in. Again, have play another good third corner, strong. I mean, they're a good, they're a good football team. There will be quite a few guys off that defense draft. And what do you think kind of Gene has brought to, the, to their defense since you've been there? Oh, Gene's a great coach. Stability, history. I mean, credibility as far as knowing that he's done at the highest levels and, and coached very well. I mean, he's just a really good football coach. Thank you, Jimbo. Thank you. So, what does it do for you and your team when you can rely on your kickers with the ADs just send the NCAA record, NCAA record last week? Well, you said that at all. You said that already. Right? I didn't say it. Your kicker said it. I'll kick him. <laughs> no, That's, I mean again, we, we work. And that, people say we kick PATs every day of practice, every day, just like we do everything. I mean, we kick them every day and make them line up, kick them, and never take them for granted. You got to focus and have the concentration, and you know they're huge. I mean, till you miss one, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you realize it, and you don't take anything for granted. We work on them and our field goals and our special teams as much as we can. And I'm I'm very pleased in the progress we're making special teams wise. We're doing a really good job. Getting better. I mean, Matthew and him, Matthew hasn't played in a year. He's leading us in tackles. Uh, had a couple issues, but all of them have had a couple gap issues here and there. But also, again, up front, we can double gap and take some things away and fit safeties better. But they're getting better. Roderick has played, and Roderick's taking on a new role now. So you got to remember, Roderick's never been the guy making all the calls and doing all that stuff. And that's that's an added burden when you got to you go into that whole thing of saying, okay, somebody else makes a call and I just play. Now I got to recognize, do all those calls. It's an added burden, and he's getting better. He does a great job at it, and he's getting better. And their play will continue to get better because they're good players. We talk about making those like added calls. How do you sense the linebackers getting comfortable in that role? Is it just the way you command things in practice? No, you got to do it. I mean, and you got to get used to doing it. You got to recognize. You got to call it quick. It's just an added. It's like you. If, if your boss has you three things to do. All right, he comes next week and you got seven things to do in the same amount of time. And you got to make a call, do this, adjust that guy, move that guy, move that guy, make the call, boom. But somebody's got to call the defense, just like a quarterback does, and that's part of that. And those, so those things getting better in that role, and you got to do it over in practice, you got to be consistent. That's why I talk about preparation and things, and that's where we're continuing to grow and we're getting better.
what has happened so dramatically? The other guys around are doing the job. Is that simple? We're blocking, we're holding up at the line of scrimmage better, we're getting our hands in place, we're giving him space, and we're creating things, and there's an urgency to do it. And we got, we're holding guys, if they ain't, we're getting them off there and putting somebody else in there. I mean, it's about doing your job. I mean, I, I know people think there's magical formulas in coach, and it isn't. Do your job. And do it every day and do it consistently, over and over and over until you're bored. And that's and that's and then then do it that much. And then f when you get bored, do it that much harder because that's when you get laps. When you think you got it. Now I joke about this and I use this as an example. Where do most accidents happen when you're driving? Why? You're relaxed. It's normal. It's easy. I got this. I ain't nothing ever happened. I'm in a comfort zone, and your awareness does not stay up. It's the same thing when you start playing well at times. And it's two things happen. You either get bored and say, man, I got this. Or you say, sometimes you look and I know people think this is crazy. There's got to be more to this. It can't be this easy. I got to, there's got to, I got to do something over here. I got to do more. I got to do this. I feel like I, I'm not doing, I'm not doing enough because I keep doing the same thing and having success. And people laugh at that and kids do that. Well, coach, if I did that, but I could do that. No. Then all of a sudden that goes away. Or they think, well, I got it for granted one time and laughs. And those are things I get. It goes back to focus issues, and that's and that's human nature. I'm not coaches too. We as coaches, when you coach it, when you prepare, are you saying every detail? Or are you saying nine out of ten of them? Or do you one day say eight out of ten of them? Your intensity, your focus. Well, I tell them on the on, on when I get on the field, I'm I'm the same every day. Try to be. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Nobody, none of us are. But you got to have the same mindset, and that's where the focus has got to come in. Are there some personnel you're seeing? They are. They're doing their job, and we've we haven't we've tweaked it some some per, some of the personnel, but a lot, a lot a lot of guys are still guys similar guys, and we've tweaked a few guys here and there. And you know, all right, you can't do that technique. We're trying to help you do a little technique like this, or double this guy, or double that guy, or pick the right guys. But again, they're doing a really nice job of doing their job and and taking an urgency to do it. And Bobo's doing a great job of catching the punt, getting the punts in the air, not letting balls hit the ground for the most part, you know, and doing a really making good judgments. Do you? Do you? I'm asking the experts. <laughs> I'm, glad the, I'm, glad, I'm asking the people with all the opinions. Y'all write all the opinions and give your opinions. Give them out now. You are. That's what I'm saying. What's your opinion? Who, who, now, who do you put in there? Who do you put in there? The Ravens, the Pro Bowl, and staff, and numbers. So you're going, you're going to go to the AD and, and, get the, and get that extra coach now. We get hired in the middle of the season and put that money in there to get a coach. That's a lot. That's a lot of money too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, but that's what I say. It's a tough sign. I don't know. I think every circumstance is different. I think, but, I, but I think it's, it's a shame that college football is getting to that too now. I really do. And I think it's, when I think it's the first sign of, the playoffs. I think you're trying to turn it into pro football. You're going to start turning into pro football. You better be careful. You better be careful what you ask for. Are you saying when the season's over, well, if a guy, if team don't go, to, so, you know, eventually you're going to do it with the ball. Well, if you can't get in the playoffs, so the team tanks it. Heck with it, we can't go. That's the thing you, you jeopardize when you start all these playoffs because it's college football. It's not pro football. Well, if, team, well, if the kid, you guys write it all, well, the season's over, you can't go to the playoffs. If this team does it, this team does it, that team does it. Well, if the kids say it and tank it, then what do you do? Coaches getting, but I mean, it's a fact of things that we're heading toward that we're trying to get like pro football. Do you want to be like pro football? Do you really want to get like? I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking the question. I'm not giving my opinion. I mean, I'm just saying. And if it is, it is. It is what it is. I'm not. We you deal with what you deal with, but you better be careful. No. I've only been a head coach seven years. Were you on a staff? Did that ever happen to you at all? Did that happen at all? Had an Auburn. I got rid of Terry in the middle of the year. Moved around, got rid of some coaches, and huh? We coached out the season. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What did, you, what did that do to your team? It finished three and eight. I mean, you know, in that regard. But I'm just saying the precedent you're setting for how you want the game to go. I'm not. I'm not talking about the say. I'm talking about the big picture of this game. 
That's why I fight for the FCS schools to play them. They go under. Then, then we're, then, then, and they don't filter down to Division II. Where's all those kids get scholarships and opportunities? And a lot of those kids come from poor minority neighborhoods that don't have opportunities otherwise except for athletics. Is that right or wrong? And there's opportunities to get an education and get things. So when you start cutting them out, you're not feeding, and they're, they're not being able to make a budget, and they start dropping. The school I played at doesn't have football. I've seen it. The school I played for does not have football anymore. I probably wouldn't be sitting here in front of you. I mean, there's a lot of things that we all want, and we want this big picture, and we want this at the end, but we're not, we don't look at the big picture of things and how it affects the game itself, the integrity of the game, and what the more of it is besides winning a championship, which we all want, and I'm as competitive as any human being out there. But be careful what you write and what you say and which way you direct people. Think about the big picture of what you're trying to do, the longevity. Not next year, 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. I'm coaching football. I don't tell them anything. I don't. I don't listen. I don't. I don't accept anything. Don't talk anything. Don't do anything. I'm not talking about LSU. No, I haven't, and I'm not talking about. It. We're talking about North Carolina. Well, well, here's the problem. All right, you start going all that no huddle, even when you score points. You you listen to, you listen to the Eagles. You know what? What are the Eagles this year? 3-0, playing great defense. How many plays are they on the field a game? 53, the least in the NFL. Because their offense keeps the ball and scores points and they're playing good. They're playing team football. When you go all that things, go running all these no huddle things and all that stuff, you go get score points, but you put your defense on the field. Eventually, they run out of gas. And on defense, the ability to chase people is hard. And then when you don't have the depth in the thing, scores are going to go up. Even though you're scoring and leads are going, people run out of gas. And then you got, then you got focus issues. you got kids, well, we got it won. Let's go play somebody else. There's eight minutes to go, ten minutes to go. And all of a sudden it snowballs and it changes. And just friends, we've played two no huddle teams this year. Critical, right? Ole Miss, and we set a school record against Ole Miss for 42 minutes of possession. And last week we had 40. One had 18, another had 20 minutes of possession. So how long was their defense on the field? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, there's a there's a when you start my days come, that's why. A lot of those teams and that stuff, you have focus issues in kids, not finishing. So, so there's a lot of teams having focus issues. About what that, would you be saying that? And you're putting your defense on the field a lot. All that spectacular stuff. There's a, there's a double-edged sword to this game. It's not an offensive game and a defensive game. It's a team game. And people don't comprehend that. And, and I say a lot of writers because they love the, uh, the offense, but you don't look at what the effect it has on the whole football team. And then, it, then the effect it has on practice by the number of plays you're doing, number of things, how much you can work them in practice, where you can get better. All those things are affected, which is why I use the GPS to give me an actual count of where our kids are and their physical demands from a game on Saturday. Huge. Could be huge if the number of plays are high. It, it could be, depending, depending on how you practice that week, what kind of recovery time, or what you did the week before, how many plays is a cumulative effect. You get one week, but is there two or three? You know, like us having three games in 12 days, and four, we've been on three three road trips in 20 days. We've been on three plane trips in 20 days. I mean, those are all factors and reasons for things. They're not excuses, but they're things that you have to factor into your practice schedules, your routines, your mental conditioning, all those things that affect the kids. Most no huddle teams, if you look at it on two first downs with no huddle teams, it's almost 90 to any no huddle team. That's crazy. That's a, that's probably, that's a little high. We need we need to be a lot better than that. But it's momentum, and we, we've lost momentum. Well, that's what you say. So how do you coach that to get better at stealing momentum back? Make it, doing your job and not panicking. Because a lot of it comes from, okay, here they go, and you and you and your inexperience gets you to eye violence, and you don't stay calm. And that's not panic. It's just comfort zone. Okay, they got a first down. Minimize. I always talk about minimize the damage. You know what I'm saying? If they do something, if they get a big play, all right, minimize. They're in the red zone. That's minimize. Make them try a field goal. If they make it, okay, we can come back from three. Or they miss a field goal with the odds of missing it. And I think that's for maturity. And, and sometimes guys, okay, instead of they got a first down, I got to go back now. And like I get punched in the jaw, I want to go punch him again. No. 
I'm going to get my hands up, see what they're doing, defend them, and then hit them. You know what I'm saying? And what I mean by that is keeping your poise in the game and going back, okay, forget that last play. Let me play the next play. The next play is the most important. And keep your poise to, and go back to execute to minimize the damage. And you got to talk like that. you got to teach like that. We practice. We'll do sudden changes. We'll, we know we've done things in practice. You know. Is that what you've got to see, though? Because, I mean, look, there, there was a stretch in all this game where your defense dominated the game. And exactly right. And it's, it's there. And, well, it's, and, and it's just the opposite on offense. Think, all right, if I get three and out, why shouldn't I go out there and be able to score every time? Because they can't get in a rhythm either. You know what I mean? And it's who can keep focus and, and who fights for it, but then who can respond to the other guy once he slips a jab in my mouth and blazes my nose? How do I respond to that? Can I just can I quit worrying about my nose bleeding and go back to playing football? You know what I'm saying? And that's part of growing young teams and maturity of teams that you got to constantly coach and do every day. And that's our job as coaches to make that not happen. Good. He's actually he was actually had a little bit of weight on it the other day, which is shocking. You know, I thought it'd be another two, thought it'd be another week, week and a half for that. And they say he's recovering good, so he's whatever he got in whatever's in that Polk County mud down there. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how you can now with all the teams you got in your conference. You know what I mean? Because you got so many divisional games. And if you do that, then you know you ain't gonna be able to schedule a lot of your non-conference games. I mean, it depends on what you want to do. But it's great to see them. I mean, they're a great team, great program. Larry's done a heck of a job. Don Tavis is getting better. Emmett's getting better. Emmett made some really nice plays on special teams. He's really learning to fit in the defense now. Don Tavis still had some. He got lined up wrong a couple times. You got him in there just on the, you know, in that hurry up deal. He makes him go. He got out of gaps, but he's still playing much better and know and knows what he's doing. Maybe just lined up like I say, for instance, if he's supposed to be here. He's a foot and a half here. But that makes a difference when you get cut off. But he's you know, you got to play him. You got to develop him. You got to get him in there. Doing a really good job. I'm proud of those guys where they're developing that right now. I mean, at the pace they're coming, they're getting better. Oh yeah, you're all four yards or less. And on offense, it's four yards or more. We rate our, we, we have a percentage. We want to be successful four yards or more at least 60% of the time on offense. If you do that, your points and scoring and all that. It's like us. When we don't have a penalty on a drive, we score about 82% of the time. If we don't have self-inflicted wounds or something like that. There, I've got a whole chat on, on, on us too on offense. When we do things and don't have, get behind the eight ball, get behind the change, I call self-inflicted wounds and do stupid things. I mean, so you have, yeah, you have success rates on first down, second down, what, you, what your percentage is on third down, and by down and distance, how I many I know what percentage of what you should stop them on. What's well, one, two, three to six, three to four, seven to eight, you know, ten plus, whatever it may be. Those are goals and, that, and things we have for offense and defense. Now, are those up-tempo teams, I mean, are they kind of the more, are they more successful in getting those bigger yards on first down? Not necessarily. Not I mean, not necessarily. I mean, it just depends on each one. Sometimes, some guys do it by underneath, some guys do it by chunks. I mean. It does, it does seem that if they don't have success on first down, they should end up. Because there's no rhythm. And the defense is set again. You've taken the, you've taken the uh, aura of eye violations. and It's all based on eye violations and speed. It's, 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 it's delusional. I say it's delusional. It's illusions of the eye. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're trying to get guys to get lined up and, and do like this, maybe once or twice. And it, you crazy as that sound, that causes you a half a step, that's space. But if once you stop them, then you're set and waiting on them. And a lot of them aren't severely complicated. There isn't a lot they do. Because you can't go that fast and have a lot of calls and do a lot of things. So it's based on having that early success to get the momentum to do that. And if they don't, then you're set and ready to go and you make the plays. See, a lot of them aren't very kind, and that's why you hear the pro guys complain about them on offense and things when they get to pro ball. Cause, and, and to go real fast, what you got to have a one-word play. In pro ball, they give you a sentence and a half. We give you about a sentence. Okay? But what I'm saying is, so they're not prepared just, just calling play, just saying things. You've seen it now with the, the quarterback at Cal. I mean, yeah, that's some of the things they're saying about that coming from that. I don't know. That's just, I'm just what I'm hearing. And what they say, and so it's it's a give and take, but it's based on speed, and there's not a lot of reads and things you would do at the next level in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? So that's why they they don't transition as well consistently because of what goes on. He did. Yeah, checking blocking schemes. 
checking how, the look we want to run into and how we want to block it and what we want to do. We have, we have it built into our call. And he's able to do that. By, we teach him what to do and how to do it and where he wants to check it and why, and why he checks it. And then that adjusts everybody on the play. Jimbo, how do you think your wide receivers are blocked this year and how important is that to... Oh, if you're going to run the football like that, that's where your big runs come. Those, those long, long ones when you really get those guys down. And uh, there's a couple times, boy, we just missed on them. We had a couple more that could have been like that. And we just, they, their guy got off or I mean, still got about a 15 or 20 yard run that almost were 70 yard runs. But it, it's critical. And, it's, and I'm going to tell you what, it's hard to block downfield because the cutting rules aren't the same as they used to be. You can't cut in certain angles like you used to. And think about something. If you're running down the field at 15 yards and you get your hands on the guy and here comes a guy blocking, you talk about how long you got to hold a block. And then, they, and then if you cut any kind of cloth or grab a guy, what do they do? It's an immediate hold. To do that without holding, that's hard. People laugh about that. That's, that's one of the hardest things to do is block downfield and not get a holding call on, a, on those long runs because you've got to hold that block so long for them to get there. It's tough now. I mean, really tough. And then that the fine line of getting a guy and, and not, you know, letting him go and not because you, you, you got him, you got him, and he starts to go and you give him a little bit of tug. There's a flag. You know, that's, that's, a very, that's a fine art that you have to teach. Spend a lot of time on. Who's the best blocking receiver you've had here? Whoo! Tell you what, KB, when he wanted to, whew, I got some, well, he used to bolo him now. I mean, he'd hit him and knock him because, and it, what he learned to do. But I go back, uh, I'm trying to think, here, Preston Parker was nasty. Preston would hurt you. But most of them would all put their hat on there, but the size guys, the bigger guys, I'm trying to think, who am I missing? Uh, give me, Fort, Fortson could at times, who? Dossie. Oh, Dossie was phenomenal blocking the guy. We had some guys at LSU, Michael Clayton was the nastiest I, I don't know, I may have ever been around. I still, we still show their videos. I show some of KB still to our guys. I mean, he'd take you and dump you clear in the fence. And I mean knock you out. Dwayne him and Dwayne Bowe were, whew, I'm talking about knock you unconscious. Early Doucette was pretty good at that too. I mean, they would, linebacker, D lineman. If you guys watch that video one time about how guys really want to be nasty, whew, whew, whew. they'd probably throw them out now. But I'm going to tell you, Travis did an unbelievable job. Him and Bobo blocked their tails off this week. Excuse me. I just think about it. I want to make sure I got that in. And we've had some good ones here. Rod and those guys have all blocked well. But big physical guys make a difference. KB was nasty. Oh, he's got tremendous ball skills. He's got great IQ of the game of football. You can see how he sits down on a route. And he's got great quickness and acceleration. I mean, he can stick his foot. He knows, he knows how to set you up, change speeds. He knows where the hole is going to be, so he can know where he's trying to get to, and he can start, stop, stick his foot, you know, and really be fast. And he's got great ball skills to judge the ball, and he got hands. And you know, a lot of times those little guys have a hard time. They ain't got big hands, you know, in those real tight areas. Man, he got ball skills. I mean, we recruited. We tried to recruit him. His dad on hillbilly from West Virginia. Wouldn't come. He was a good player, boy. I wouldn't. I don't know. I'm not going. I don't know who else we got there. We got to look. I'm not going to take it, but he's as good as anybody I've seen. That guy's that guy's legit now. And as a receiver. How deep is your defense right now? Also, how is Josh We're banged up. I mean, but everybody is. I mean, you know, Derwin's out there. Josh, hopefully, he rehab. He had surgery went very successful. Exactly what we thought. So just the amount of how he rehabs and gets back, well, you know, he'll rehab and we'll see. It's just too early yet. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you got some guys with nicks and knacks and bruises, but that's, you know, that's part of the game. I, I'm not going to rule out any. I, 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 I can't answer the question because there's not enough information yet to see. You know what I'm saying? It's just too soon. Yeah, and he could have came back in, had irritation on the foot, retaped him, and he could have went back in. By that time, we'd gotten the ball back, you know, and, and had, had that long drive. So, he was, so we expect he, he'd be fine. Everybody's always you're always as a, as a football player. If you get down there, they're all got ice. They all got that's just normal stuff. I mean, and they all treat it because he had the surgery in the summer. So that's something they always look at. So, but I guess he was hurt, right? He wasn't healthy, was he? You don't believe me? I ain't gonna lie about that stuff. Now I promise you, I ain't gonna lie about nothing. But I don't. If I know it, I'm gonna tell you. A little bit. It'd be shit. He played though. Did good. And, we just, we had, and Fred started playing pretty decent at times, so we give him some reps, and he did pretty good. we got to keep building that depth. Good? Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies.